Hello and welcome to episode number 4 of my How to Draw Anime Last series. Now, I've noticed that the way I've drawn my character's arm does look a little bit strange. It looks like her forearm is a little bit too short, so I'm actually going to change it. The problem with colouring any objects in is if you want to change the stroke lines, you have to get rid of the colour first because that's really going to get in the way. So, like you can see here, I have to delete the colour off, then move the stroke lines, then recolor it in afterwards. <laughs> I know. So it's like, you have to make sure that you're A-OK -okay with the stroke lines before colouring in because it takes longer to fix something after you've coloured it in. So, you know, so you have to mind out for that. I think that's the case with other art programs as well. Now, I do have a story to tell you, but it's partially a rant. And it's where it has to do with a company called Your Sushi. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't ultra hate them or anything, but I feel like they're a little bit dingified lately, right? And it's where back in the year 2020, they sent me an email saying, Oh, if you come here, we can give you 50% off on your next order at your sushi. So I thought, oh cool, let's go. Because I love the food at um, your sushi. I love the yasai rolls and I love the kobachu katsu. You know, the pumpkin katsu. It's called kobachu katsu uh, as another name. And as well, when I went to them back in year 2020, they were closed. And on top of that, there was like builders in there that were like building objects, you know, like the furniture and everything. So I thought, that's strange. Didn't they tell me to come here? And it's like, it's closed. So I thought, oh, well. And so I went somewhere else and then did whatever I needed to. And then I went back up. And then guess what happened the next day? I got an email saying, oh, we're open now. It's like, yeah, go tell me that you're open after coming to you and it's a locked door with builders going inside of it and everything. It's like, yeah, that makes sense, doesn't it? Right. But that was back in the year 2020. And then in um, year 2022, now this version, a little bit of this is my fault for this time. And it's where it was like Easter Sunday. And it's where I went to them. And they were actually closed, so that was kind of my fault. We are not checking online if they were actually open or not. But they didn't send me an email saying, oh, we're not actually open today. <laughs> they should have at least told me that by email, because I get emails from these sort of companies. And then fast forward to 2023, right? And it's where I got an email again from the same company saying, oh, we're giving you five pounds off on your next order. And I think you're going to be able to tell what's going to happen next. Right? I watched for 20 minutes, like I did the first two times. And I went to them. And guess what? They were closed again. And there was a builder outside. And I asked him, oh, how long is this place going to be closed for? And he said, oh, it's going to be closed for two weeks. So I thought, okay. Now, that's not his fault, so don't worry. I'm not angry at him. But it's the fact that to keep... The company keeps telling me, oh, oh, come here and get a discount over and over again. And when I go to them, they're not even open. It's just like, <clears throat> it's like, come on. Now, I was walking around town to go get other stuff because I like going to shops like Tullivers. Tullivers is actually good. They've got some amazing shampoos. That's actually fully natural. So I was around town to go buy that recently. So that's why. So I only like partially wasted my walking trip to your sushi but i think you kind of get the point so i just thought now this has been happening across three years but they were open between it all so i did go to them from time to time and then eat out there and such and it's like you know. after through coming to them three times and it's a locked door i don't think i should really be trusting them very much with their emails to you so i'm not going to go to them for three months i can't be bothered and here's another thing right at places like tesco's and morrison's you can actually buy kabachi katsu dishes and it's like four pound fifty they're not as nice as the ones at your sushi but i think i'd rather have those ones instead because they're right there you can pick it up buy it go home heat it up or even take it anywhere else with a microwave and just make it then just eat it like that so you know. 
Now you're probably thinking, well, why did you trust them for so long if they keep sh closing up on you so many times? It's because there's been like a couple of times where they sent me a birthday email saying, oh, if you come to us, you can have one third of your price off. And they actually were truthful and actually gave me it. And they were actually open those two times. So two out of five times, they were actually open and gave me the discount. So, you know, <laughs> so that's why. So I don't completely hate them. I might go back to them, but I, as of this recording, I don't think I should go to them and just walk for 20 minutes, come across a locked door, have to ask when they're next open and that sort of thing. And they just they just spread misinformation. That's the problem with your sushi. So sometimes I go to a place called Wagamama, but I, the, Wagamama's food is not as nice by a little bit. And some of their uh, prices are a little bit too high. Because once I ate at Wagamama, and it's where the, it, the full meal cost like £12, and that's a bit too high for a full meal. It's like in other places you can actually get a full meal for like 8 or £9, so I can understand that. But £12 is a little bit too pricey, so that's why I don't go to Wagamama that often. <laughs> Whereas at your sushi, at least you only have to pay like 7 £8 and get like a decent meal. Oh, and that's another thing, right? At your sushi, when you buy something called miso soup, they actually give you free refills. Well, it's not free, but, you know, they, they give you, like, a second cup if you really want it, and they don't charge you extra for it. So, you know, so that's one of the reasons why I still like your sushi, to some extent. So I just think that, at an honest point of view, I'd only give them three stars out of five. So at least they're not too expensive, but, and at least they gave me two discounts, truthfully and they did it and everything and so there is that as well so yeah you know so basically bottom line your sushi has gone from a good company to just all right so yeah oh yeah there's this uh american cartoon series me and a bunch of people used to watch called Oh, Z and Grix. It's quite a good series actually i remember it was aired on the year 2002 so it's like over 20 years ago's news but it's where my favorite episode by far is the nicotine one and i remember the gang who had like a bunch of smoking related things right and it's where the leader is called nicotine and he has a voice right it's a, quite a funny one and he says i'm on bite a ball <laughs> it's really funny it's where, that was an amazing episode it really looked like there was going to be a part two but the way nicotine loses is just so dumb though right basically he tried to take over hector's brain and he enters the brain by infecting this one kid who's basically the governor right and it's where when he brainwashes him the little kid who's the governor he actually grants nicotine entry into the brain and then is where nicotine is like goes over to this device that has hector's favorites it just turns the guitar into a cigarette and i'm like thinking why don't you just change all of them into a cigarette but the way he loses well nicotine loses is by hector just refusing to take a second cigarette nicotine like loses the marbles and starts going no take it take it take it and it just shrinks and then Ozzy's just like there like going ah you can just put my foot down and it just dies it's like they made it way too weak on the last minute it's like I feel like the story writing got a bit pants there it's like what I think they should have done was made it be where Hector takes that second cigarette and then there's a part two and he has to get some serious help to try and get him off cigarettes and that's how they actually do it <laughs> but it's just like there were other bad guys that were with nicotine but i can't remember what they're called but they were pretty interesting those ones as well they were trying to stop ozzy and Drix and the little dog dander i think that's his name they were trying to stop all three of them from trying to save hector from being overtaken by them the second best episode is the bacteria one where the general is like saying if we want to survive we must have a sugar and yes they talk like that in the french way <laughs> and it's just, that's the second best episode by far and it's where <laughs> the way they all die the army dies 
is by <laughs> taking salt by accident instead of sugar. And it's just like, I'm pretty sure in reality, bacteria is not weak against salt, but okay. <laughs> and it's just so funny. And they're basically trying to teach the audience don't eat sugar all the time. <laughs> sort of thing is like you know and it's where the most surprising thing is that Hector has a friend I can't remember what his name is right and Hector's friend is the one that keeps getting him into trouble by making him smoke make him eat sugar and lots of really bad things that's very harmful to his body and then it's where someone else has to go and fix Hector in the end it's just like what okay <laughs> and there's a third favorite episode of mine from Aussie and Tricks and it's the one with it's actually the first episode and it has to do with a bad guy called Scarlet Fever right and it's where Scarlet Fever really likes water right and he acts very suspicious well not suspicious but like he acts really creepy we'll just say right he like and it looks around, right? And there's like evil music in the background and Scarlet's like, and yes, he's a man, by the way. Well, a German man. And it's where he goes over to his water and says, Oh, yes! Oh, yes! And he sucks all the water in and he like gets stronger out of it and like transforms. And he says at the end, Oh, Hector, you're like nectar to me. And me and a bunch of people offline were like thinking, Okay, that does sound a bit weird. <laughs> <laughs> the most surprising thing about Scarlet's fever is that he literally dies at the end, but he dies a bit too violently for a show that's supposed to be for like teenagers and up. Because it's like, he like gets in this helicopter and he gets sucked into this spinning fan and like cuts the helicopter into pieces and he dies in it. And I think, okay, okay, that's totally something Resident Evil like. Because there's a game called Resident Evil 6 and there's one death you can get where there's this like this zombie thing that like pushes one of the heroes into a spinning fan and cuts them into pieces that way so i'm like thinking holy moly <laughs> even though resident evil 6 came out way after ozzy and drix did <laughs> like wow this is like spinning fans are very very dangerous you know <laughs> you know this is like wow it's like, I swear some story writers really don't care about making bad guys die in the most goriest ways possible in something that's like for like teenagers and all, but you know, it's like, wow. Oh, there's this really popular anime out there called Oshinoko. I've not watched the whole thing, and there's this one song called Idol, as in pop singer, right? And there's so many fan covers of that one song, it's not even funny, right? There's obviously the Japanese version, which is the official version. And then you got the fan cover versions of that. And then you got English fan covers of it. And then you got French versions of it. And then you got German versions of it. And yes, there's even a Spanish version and an Italian version of it. It's like, it, why does everyone love the song so much? Well, not everyone, but it's well, <laughs> you know. And there is an instrumental version of it, and there's like an, a retro version of it that's in like 8-bit NES style as well. And there's even violin version and uh, flute version and everything. It's like, wow, I didn't know <laughs> so many people like that one song by Yao Sobi so much. I mean, I like it, but only certain versions of it. I like the instrumental versions the most, because it's like, you know, <laughs> just my personal taste. I did look into the actual anime itself and I was so surprised that now spoiler alert right, I was so surprised that the singer girl um, Ai Hoshino I was surprised she actually dies at the end of like episode 1 or 2 I was like wow did they really just kill off the main character like straight away I have the feeling Ai Hoshino is actually going to come back because there's already reincarnation put into the show already Anyway, I think that'll actually do for now, so that's it for episode number 4, so yeah, I think I'll end it off here. Thank you for watching the video, if you want to actually show your support, you may tick like, share, or subscribe to my channel. You can even do all three of them if you want to, so yeah, and with that, I'll end off the video, so thanks you for watching.